make it sound like there's actually some people in the room. This is good. Um, all right, so the uh, name of the talk is Touch Me, I Dare You. Um, there are a lot of uh, touch devices out there in the world, and uh, this talk is about how to, uh, to work with those, and uh, uh, more importantly, how to work with them not just with touch, but also there's a tremendous number of devices that are out there that are very similar to this one, um, which is, you know, I've got the, uh, the Surface Pro here, and it's got a full keyboard, and it's got a, a mouse, and I can actually use a, a pin, and I don't know how many people have seen the pins um, that come with the, the Surface Pro uh, and other uh, Windows devices. They actually have a radio tip uh, on the front of them, which means that it better, more than a capacitive pin, a capacitive pin is able to uh, be a big finger, basically, or, or, or slightly more accurate finger. Um, a radio tipped pin with the right digitizer, very much like a Wacom board, is pixel perfect in its accuracy and it has tilt, and it has pressure, and it has a whole bunch of other things. And so there's a whole bunch of things that we can do with a pin that we can't do with a finger. Uh, but in addition to that, you know, there's also touch devices and mice and keyboards and so on. Um, so that's what this talk is about. All right, so um, he told me to gesture at this one because this one's actually on screen. That one is actually not on screen. That, so I can wander about here and then I vanish. It's just, you know, so you'll see a lot of weird as I go, uh, no, over here. Um, so, uh, my name is Josh Holmes, and uh, you can find me on Twitter at uh, Josh Holmes, uh, and you can find my blog at joshholmes.com, uh, and I'm josh.holmes at microsoft.com. Uh, I've worked at Microsoft for about six and a half years. Uh, the last three or so were in Ireland, um, and the last uh, three weeks have actually been in uh, Redmond uh, on the Internet Explorer team. So, uh, brand new to the Internet Explorer team, so I've had at least a week more of I'm new to the team, I don't know, okay? So when you ask me the tough questions, expect that as a response, okay? All right, uh, so why does touch matter? Uh, touch matters because of the incredible pr uh, proliferation of touch devices that are out there in the world. Um, and I mean, it, it's something like 25% uh, of all the Windows 8 machines that are shipping are all touch devices. Uh, obviously, a tremendous number of the mobile phones, uh, all the uh, tablets, uh, ranging from the, uh, uh, the iPad uh, over to the, the Surface, like this one, um, even the new Chromebooks. Uh, so uh, if you look at the, the Chromebook Pixel, uh, it's a touch screen device. Um, so there's a tremendous number of touchscreen devices that are out there uh, that are shipping and, you know, so, so you need to figure out how are you going to deal with them. And there's kind of three basic strategies that you can take uh, at an Uber level, you know. So the first one, uh, oh, oh, sorry, I forgot. Touch devices are actually even going into weird and interesting places. Like, I don't know how many of you are staying at the hotel. But when I got off the elevator this morning, I saw this. Touch it says, uh, touch the screen to interact with the uh, Amelia Island Plantation. It's like, cool. So I touched it, and sure enough, there's a touch browser in the damn hotel on the TV. Okay, this is cool. I like this. So what is your strategy for dealing with touch? It's absolutely a legitimate strategy to ignore it, if you know what you're doing. You know? So if you can consciously say, you know what, I'm not going to worry about touch. It's not my target demographic. Uh, or, you know what, uh, touch, you know, the, the, the mouse simulation on touch devices is good enough, okay? And, and I'll show you some examples of this here in a little bit. But mouse simulation on touch devices is good enough in a lot of cases. Um, actually, you know what, I'm going to jump over to one of the demos now, and I'll show you this uh, very briefly. So this, this is a little bit of code. Um, if you've done any um, mouse work, uh, you've, you've seen code very much like this. So uh, I'm going to grab an event, uh, mouse up, mouse up, and mouse move. So all I'm going to care about is when I click and when I move the mouse, right? And so I'm going to run this project, and it's this one that I'm looking at here, okay? And so what this is, a little Pong demo, and you can see I move my mouse, and that works decently. I move my mouse to this side, and that works decently. Excitement, excitement, right? Okay. Um, so I'm going to click that. And so I can go play Pong badly. And uh, it's a combination of kind of Pong and Breakout. Um, anyways, so this all looks fine, right? This, this, is, this is working. So I can ignore touch. 
no, no, actually I can't. Um, and there's a couple of reasons for that. The primary one is your user has more than one finger. So what happens when they want to move over here, because that actually does work, okay? But now this one over here doesn't. Anybody have a guess as to why this one doesn't? Well, I can move this one over here. Because mouse, there's only one, right? So what do you do here? You start programming for touch, and so you start, uh, start uh, uh, using uh, touch as it's meant to be. So the two other things you can do here is you can retrofit um, you know, touch onto your application, or you can design for touch first. And I'm going to suggest that if you design for touch first, you'll actually be in a much better position. Um, and because all the things that you do for touch should work for the mouse and keyboard as well. Um, so there's a couple of things that you have to remember when you're designing for touch. First and foremost is hover sucks. Don't, don't do it. Um, don't, don't use hover. Uh, because you actually, you know, the, the thing with touch is it's touching. You have to actually touch. You have to actually click in order to get something to happen. Because this computer has no idea that my finger is a millimeter off the screen. It just doesn't, okay? Someday we may have computers that can do that, but I'm betting it's not gonna be built into your mobile phone anytime soon. Now, there are, there, there's a lot of great scenarios where browsers are compensating for this and so on. It's still not ideal. Don't use hover. Instead, use click, uh, or better yet, actually build a menu that is designed for touch, okay? Obviously, hopefully, use touch size buttons, okay? Now, the reason for this is that the average human finger is about 11 millimeters, okay? Now, basketball players, they're up kind of in the 19, 20 millimeter range. Um, the uh, babies are kind of in the seven, six, seven millimeter range. But when you get to this range, you know, it's, it's kind of 11, well, I've got these big moose claws, it's like 40. Um, but anyways, the, uh, so one is obviously big touch things, but you also have to remember where your users are. So your users are gonna be using your device all over the place. They could be on the couch, they could be walking, they could be on a bus, and the bus is kind of jiggling back and forth. You don't know where they are. And so you also have to remember that the touch devices, um, that there's a very large percentage of missed taps, okay, where they're tapping somewhere else on the screen. So bigger buttons, bigger landing zones, account for the fact that they may or may not actually hit the target. Think about that as you're developing your application. Remember where your users are touching the device. So if I've got a phone in my hand and I'm going to touch a button on the top, that on this big ass phone is uncomfortable, okay? Touching down at the bottom, actually fairly comfortable, okay? Same thing goes on a slate, okay, on a tablet. I mean, anybody pick up their slate and hold it on the sides and where can your thumbs reach? That's comfortable, okay? Anywhere beyond that, and it's not. So think about where you're putting your interactions. And so when you're thinking about your interactions, you should be, oh, there's a big stand right there. You should be looking at kind of the very bottom and the corners being the best possible interaction. So for example, if you're developing a game, make sure that you're putting the controllers on the outside. If you're developing a blog reader, you know, or, or a blog, right? Make sure that you're putting the controls, you know, to navigate to the next, and to, to read the next article out on the sides and down towards the bottom so that it's more comfortable and easier for people to touch. The thing is, that's, that's not gonna counter to mouse. It's exactly the same as the mouse. It's just that we're used to putting all of our stuff up at the top. That's just the way that we've designed it because that's the way newspapers worked. And so we designed it that way, okay? So think about where you're going to be doing things. And, uh, and then your reading areas are exactly the opposite. Okay, so the things that are kind of up towards the middle and, and centered, those are the best reading areas, partially because nothing gets in the way of them if you have your controls out of the sides and down towards the bottom, okay? Remember that there's more than one finger, okay? So this gets to my, the part of, part of the demo there was there is more than one finger, and so we want to be able to um, uh, uh, scroll back and forth and, and um, uh, use more than one finger for things like pinch and zoom, things like controlling both sides of the screen. There's a whole bunch of different things that we can do there. And also remember that there's more than one type of input. Okay, so more than one type of input, you know, I already talked about the mouse and I already talked about the pen a little bit. Um, the mouse and the pen are very important parts of the user's input. So, 
from a technical perspective, now that I've talked about the design side a little bit, how do we actually do this? Okay? And so uh, the exciting part is there's actually one set of events that we can catch that will actually catch all those different types of inputs and can handle multiple types of inputs okay, all at the same time. And it's pointers. Okay? Uh, pointers is a uh, it's W3C pointer standard. Um, Microsoft has been working on this. We've submitted it. Um, he's telling me I should be doing this one here. There's a big grin on his face back there. Uh, so um, the events here are actually very similar to what you'd be comfortable with if you've done any mouse work. So uh, pointer down, pointer move, pointer up, pointer over, pointer out, and cancel. Okay, those are all very similar events to what you would have for, uh, for a mouse. So if you've done anything with a mouse, you're ready to go with pointers. Okay? Um, the exciting part is this is a new candidate recommendation. And what this is going to do is capture all of our different types of events. And what we're going to get on a given um, uh, event is we're actually going to get the width of the touch, okay, or the width of the, of the, uh, the pointer. We're going to get the height of it. We're going to get the pressure if it's a pin. You're going to get the tilt if it's a pin. We're going to get the rotation if it's a pin or a mouse or, or a touch. So if I touch it this way, that's different than if I touch it this way, which is different than if I touch it this way. And we may want to react to that differently. Okay? Um, you get the pointer type. So was it a finger? Was it a, um, uh, and actually I, I believe it just says touch. Uh, was it a pin or was it a mouse? And it's open for additional types of inputs as we go forward. Uh, the pointer ID, because uh, you, you can actually have more than one. And so we can have, you know, uh, the demo I'll show later. I forget how many touch points. How many touch points does the Service Pro have? Five? Okay. So I'll show five plus a mouse, and I'll see if I can get a pin in there as well. Um, and then, uh, uh, then the, you know, the event type and so on and so forth. So there's a lot of different things that come in with that. Um, all right. So let's go back over here, and let's fix this demo here. So first of all, comment out that code there. Okay, so We don't need that code anymore. And instead, I'm going to, oops, not that, but that is the comment. Should have done a block comment on that as well, but oh well. All right, so let me scroll out a little bit and I'll show you what I just uncommented there. Uh, so this is exactly the same code, it's just copy pasted with MS pointer up, MS pointer up, MS pointer move and MS pointer move. Um, what we're doing here is uh, we've got two basic blocks and uh, we're setting up the MS pointer up and MS pointer move for the left overlay and for the right overlay. That way we can actually control you know, two, the two different sides, the two different paddles at the same time. Okay, and so I'm going to save that. I come back over to my little game and let's, uh, let's refresh. And we'll pick our little block here now. But now notice, as I'm touching here, both of them are working, one on either side, because there's more than one type of touch. And we'll see if we can get a uh, one little game here between the two of them. Now, what if I drop my mouse over here? That's cool, too. So I can now do mouse and pointer all at the same time, and that's fine. Or if I wanted to drag the pin in here, oops. Boom, I've now got uh, pen and mouse and finger, and all of them, of them will work at the same time. Okay? Cool? I think that's pretty awesome. All right, so uh, now this begs the question though what happens? Let me come back over to here. Uh, so, uh, well, here, let me briefly go through the code here, and then we'll, um, uh, th then we'll take a look at the. Um, uh, sorry, I'm getting a little feedback on the mic. My, my phone is way over there. <laughs> um, so uh, I'll take a look through the code a little bit, and then we'll then we'll talk about the, uh, the 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 obvious question. What's the obvious question? Nobody. What's that? Browser support. Very good. All right. So very similar to um, uh, how you would do with a uh, with touch events. We're going to uh, if you've done any of that with that well on, on iOS. Um, we're going to iterate through just the list of pointers here and say, uh, for this pointer, we're going to you know act upon it. OK? 
Okay, it's very, very simple uh, to, to, to roll through. Uh, you get a list of those and you can get all the other um, uh, items off of like the pointer type, the um, uh, tilt and so on and so forth. Uh, if you're on iOS or on Android, you get uh, these events, uh, which are very hard to read as I'm seeing from the uh, cheap seats there in the back. Um, but this is touch start here at the top. And then there's also touch end, touch move, and so on and so forth. Uh, the thing about the, those, um, uh, those events is that, um, A, they are um, just touch. They're not touch and mouse and pen and everything else. Uh, second of all, uh, those are uh, not a standard. They're not a W3C standard and uh, are not likely to become one because uh, there are multiple patents on the implementations of touch start and touch end that are not going to be licensed out to the other browsers. Uh, so there's, there's some issues with those, um, which is why we recommend staying away from those. Um, the, uh, or not, not recommend staying away, it's a uh, don't use those as your only, and we're not going to be looking at those in Internet Explorer. Um, but it's touch, start, and then we also have to add the mouse here because we're doing both, okay? Um, because the mouse and touch, we don't want to just react to one or the other. Now, does anybody spot the flaw in this code here? Besides if you, if, if you read it. So at the beginning it says, if on touch start uh, in elements, uh, sorry, document dot document element. So if we're able to do touch, um, my uh, button dot event handler, uh, sorry, did add, add event handler, touch start, blah, 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 else add the one for click, for mouse. Can't do both at the same time. Which means that a device like this is very, very frustrating because I get to your website and I have seen this in probably three or four dozen websites as I've been researching uh, this, this talk over the past week. Um, I get to the website and I can't use the mouse anymore because it detects that I have a touch screen and freaks out. Whoops. Okay, so, um, so don't do that. So instead, what we're going to do is, and I'm going to blow this code up if I can. Can I zoom in a little bit on this? Go to 200% and see. No, that is unworkable. Uh, so I'll just walk you through it. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, the resolution on this screen is, is crazy. So um, what we've got is we've got a if ms pointer uh, enabled. Uh, so are we able to do the uh, pointer events? Um, if so, add those. Otherwise, we're going to add the touch starts and the click and so on and so forth. Okay, so we're going to do a fallback, um, but I'm actually going to tell you don't do that. Instead, use one of the polyfills for pointers. Okay, so this gets to the browser support question, which is um, handjs, uh, polymer pointer events, and points.js uh, uh, are all decent fallbacks, decent um, uh, polyfills for, uh, for, for pointer events. Uh, handjs is the one that I've used the most at the moment. Um, that doesn't mean it's the best one, it just means that it's the one that I've used the most at the moment. So um, let me come back over here to this code, and let me show you first of all what happens in Chrome at the moment. So uh, we bring, bring this up in Chrome, let's go to our bricks, and we click and we try to touch, and right now it doesn't understand what pointers are, so no. All right, so, uh, so you've seen that it doesn't work in Chrome, so let's go polyfill that. Um, what I'm going to do is now, oops, hang on. So we're going to uncomment that. And we're going to do the exact same, ah, come on now. The uh, buttons are slightly different places than uh, what I'm used to here. I'm realizing I accidentally deleted that. Paste. So now what we're going to do is instead of ms pointer, we're just going to do that. Move. Copy. Paste. 
All right, so now we've done, we've added that support in, uh, but I also need to go add in hand.js uh, to my uh, HTML file. Comment, uncomment to that. And so now, so you see the reference here to um, hand.js, and here is the little bit of code. So if we have MS Pointer support, great, let's use that. Um, otherwise, we're gonna polyfill the other browsers to, uh, to give them the uh, mouse support as well, uh, or sorry, the pointer support. Uh, so now I come back over here to Chrome. Oh. Again, buttons are in the wrong different place here. So we're gonna refresh that now, and now we should get, so here is with pointer support in Chrome, rocking and rolling. Cool? Multi-touch multi support is that easy, okay? Um, all we did here is, if we come back over to, to this, we're using pointer events, and pointer events are gonna be a catch-all for mouse, touch, multi-touch, as well as your uh, pin support and that type of thing. Um, and HamJS is gonna give us a, a decent polyfill backwards to other browsers. Um, there is actually uh, a lot of movement on this particular spec. Um, it moved from a, uh, a you know, we, we submitted the spec on September of last year, and in May it became a candidate recommendation, like setting land speed records to get to candidate recommendation uh, point, because the industry sees that this is a need, this is, this is a problem. Um, if you were watching any of the Google I.O. stuff last week, uh, Boris got up and talked about uh, pointers and what a great thing that they are. They are gonna be implementing them in Chrome. Uh, there is a sample implementation for Chromium. Uh, Firefox has stepped up and said that they're gonna be implementing it. Uh, no word from other camps. Leave that as it is. Um, and so, uh, anyways, so that is the, the meat of what I wanted to talk about here with the um, uh, pointer events. Questions on any of that? Yes? Is IE going to Oh, oh, are we gonna re remove the prefixes in the next uh, uh, version? Um, I can't speak to future roadmap, uh, and also three weeks on the team, I don't know that, to be honest. But, um, I mean, I, I would assume that that's gonna be coming at some point. Because, um, I mean, we are gonna implement the spec as the spec is reads, and the spec reads as the polyfill reads, which is right here with the pointers. So, okay. Other questions, yes? Right, so, so the question was, um, uh, could I actually remove the MS pointer bit at the top? And the answer is yes, I could remove that, and it would work. Um, the problem there that you would run into there is performance, okay? Because um, the MS pointers are actually been implemented natively on the browser and are incredibly performant, and the other is a polyfill. Make sense? Okay, but you, you could do that if, you, if, if, if it's not a performance issue for you, yes? Yes, so in the event, uh, you'll actually get that. Um, so let me go back over here to the uh, slides. So on the event object, you actually get all of this information and more, okay? So one of them is the pointer type, and that'll tell you, is it a pin, is it a mouse, is it a, is it a touch, what kind of pointer is it? And you'll, you'll be able to react to that uh, differently. Yes, there, there are constants for those. Yep, um, and I, I forget, I think they're just one, two, three, four, five uh, type of a thing, so. Yep, yes. Okay, so um, browser support for pressure, tilt, and what was the other one? 
Oh, touch radius. Um, so the MS pointer um, uh, events, they, they will give you tilt and uh, pressure uh, off of a pin. Uh, they don't give you that off a touch because the touch strings are not, they, they don't quite understand that yet. Um, the, uh, but they, do, well, they will give you that off of a pin. Um, I, and that is part of the spec. And so the other browsers should be coming on board with that at some point in time, but it'll be dependent upon devices that actually support the pin. Okay. All right. With that, I think, oh no, I still have three more minutes. Yay. So you want to see one more cool thing? All right. So uh, one other thing, and this is, this is actually a, uh, one more little vendor prefix thing, unfortunately, uh, but we're getting there. Um, so there is MS scroll and there's snap points and snap type, and then there's content zooming. So I'm gonna go over to a couple of demos here and show you both of these real quickly. Uh, so let me go back here to Internet Explorer, and let's do the carousel first. Uh, so this is the traditional scroll. So I've got a, um, uh, uh, oh, sorry, I need to point at this one. Uh, I have a list of images here at the top, and they're just in a list box, and we've, you know, so you can see there we're moving, um, and I can move this way, and they, you know, you see the, the momentum, and, you know, but notice where it stops and stuff, okay, as it's doing that. So then the other question, the other thing I can do is I can use a, this is a jQuery, um, uh, touch carousel, okay, and so I just touch it, and it's going to slide to the next one, okay. But watch, watch my fingers. I move, and then I release. See how that feels? Okay. Now this works, right? It, it, it works, but it's not great. I don't really, I don't love it. Okay. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here to the bottom one, and this bottom one is using the uh, prefixes that I just talked about here, the um, MS scroll snap and snap points. And so now, notice it's right underneath my finger, and if I release right there, isn't that nice? I like that a lot. Okay, so that was that's one of them that I that I've been playing with recently, and I really really like that one. Um, the other one that I want to show you, oops. Yes. Currently, it's uh, that that's an IE thing. Okay, um, as far as I know. Uh, uh, I don't know for sure. I don't know. Um, all right, so. Here is the other thing. So this is the uh, content zoom. Um, and so uh, MS content zooming. And so we're just going to put that on a particular uh, div or something like that. So now, right, right now, if I grab the picture and I'm going to zoom, notice it zooms the entire page. That's not fun, right? So I'm going to turn that off. Or, sorry, I'm going to turn on the, uh, the content zoom bit. And so now, notice it's just scrolling the picture. That's cool, huh? Yeah. So I like that one as well. Uh, what's that? Uh, so no, it's, it's oops, sorry. Uh, let me go back to there. Uh, so it's actually just, it, it's actually set a uh, zoom level as well. And so I can only zoom to a certain point. Uh, but that's as far as it'll zoom to right there. Uh, but all that's within, inside of the div right there. And it's fine. All right, uh, now if I uh, close that, now I go back to here, now I can resume, you know, that way. So, all right. So, I've done that. Uh, wrap up. Um, a lot of the stuff that I've talked about is uh, talked about at the, again, this one, uh, docs.webplatform.org slash pointer events, as well as uh, modern.ie. Uh, the other thing with modern.ie is that modern.ie is a site where you can go up, you plug in your website, and it'll actually scan and look for uh, a lot of common issues uh, across a lot of different websites. So, uh, for example, I, I showed a guy this morning, and it turned out that he uh, was using a lot of vendor prefixes in his CSS and was uh, missing the Opera ones as well as the uh, Dash MS ones. Um, so, you know, it's going to look for those kind of things. It's going to look for responsive web design. Are you uh, enabled for touch? Uh, so on and so forth. And then docs.webplatform.org uh, is a place where we at Microsoft have been contributing a lot of uh, docs and working with a lot of other people to make sure those doc their docs are uh, up to snuff across all the browsers. And uh, so we've been uh, talking about the pointer events. And then, of course, go look at the W3C and see what they're doing with pointer events. 
And uh, you can always find me at joshholmes.com, joshholmes on Twitter, josh.holmes at Microsoft.com. Feel free to email me questions, and because uh, if I don't know the answer, I'll go see if I can go find it. Um, and there will be times I can't answer, but I'll try. Anyways, thank you very much. Thank you.